What is up guys, Ultra Balls back with a SPL game here. We have an OU game between Psychic Mewtwo and Sabella. Uh, happy to bring this to you guys. So I guess before we get into the replay, we'll just look at the teams really quick. Uh, Alright, so we see Sabella's team. Uh, he has Chansey Offense. Um, I'm not exactly sure why the Chansey's there. I, f I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of... Like, I feel like Chansey could be something else, but... Um, like, if Chansey was just like an Ashgren check, I feel like the team would be better. Like, I just, I, I'm not a huge fan of, like, Chansey offense. I'm pretty sure Sabella uses that a lot, though, if I remember from other tournaments, unless I'm remembering someone else. Um, yeah. And then Psychic Mewtwo's team, uh, he's got a Mammoth Swine. Uh, that's interesting. It actually destroys Sabella, so that looks like to be a good bring on his part. Uh, Tengrowth is, like, I hate that mon a lot at the moment, but, um... Yeah, if that's like an Ashgren, obviously good check for that. I just, I've like AV Bulu's like so much more at the moment, but yeah, I guess we'll just hop right in. So we see the lead here. We got Coco and Latios. Uh, so obviously Sabella's not going to want to stay in here and take his potential specs uh, Dazzling Gleam. So he'll probably go into either uh, Magnezone or Chansey. And we'll see what Psychic Mewtwo does. I would go for the, um, yeah, I would definitely would have gone for the momentum move there. He gets a U-turn here into Tangrowth. Um, I don't, I don't get why Sabella did that. I don't like that play at all. Um, yeah, I don't like I don't like Chansey getting knocked. Obviously, the toxic on the on the Tangrowth would have been huge for um, the helping Ashgren, but I don't think you want to you let your Chansey get knocked. I don't agree with that play at all. I also don't agree with having him stay in to take an Iron Head. Uh, he was probably assuming Rocks would come out and wanted to like wish or wanted to soft boil on Rocks, but I don't like that play either because now Chansey's like lost it to Violite and is at forty percent within like three turns. Uh, you see, okay. um... Ice Cool Crash is going so fast because we're a little bit behind. Ice Cool Crash on uh, Magnezone and then a switch out. Uh, obviously, Psychic Mewtwo switched to his Landorus, predicting. Um, what do you go, Landorus? I guess because this is probably a Scarf Lando on Psychic Mewtwo's side, so it looks like we caught up now. So I think the reason why Psychic Mewtwo went Lando is because uh, the Magnezone very well could be Scarfed, right? So um, if. Even if Sabella is Scarf Magnezone, he could go for Flash Cannon there on the uh, Mammoth Swine, which is obviously a huge problem to them, to him. And that would hit the Landers for good damage, but the Landers would still then outspeed the next turn and easily eat up the Flash Cannon. So I'm assuming what Psychic Mewtwo did was saying, like, okay, if he Flash Cannons, me going into Landers isn't the worst case scenario because, um, you know, like, if, if I go Landers, even if he does Flash Cannon, I eat it up and, and I still could grab momentum the next turn. Um, whereas, like, him leaving in... Mamoswine to die to a Scarf Flash Cannon would be really bad. Uh, and then Sabella pivoted into his own Landorus, and Psychic Mewtwo was able to cover that play as well uh, by going Lando. So, um, yeah. Obviously, Sabella goes Lando there, expecting maybe an Earthquake. So that tells me maybe Magnezone's not Scarf, but I would assume it still is, because I think... I mean, it doesn't have to be, but I would assume it is. Um, you know, we'll see here. Now, Psychic Mewtwo goes Mamoswine, and Sabella goes Magnezone, assuming uh, Psychic Mewtwo's Landorus to be Scarf. Which I'm nearly positive it is anyway. Uh, just looking at the team. It's probably Spadeferachi with Wish Protect. Um, I don't know the Coco set yet. AV, Growth. Um, yeah, it could actually be like a Z-Move. Um, Z-Move Coco because um, that looks to be the one Z-Move user. Because it's probably Mega Gera. So we see Jirachi go. We see Psychic Mewtwo go into Jirachi. So good play. Still not risking the Scarf. And like I said, it probably is Scarf. So now Sabella goes Lando, but we see the U-turn out. I'm assuming the Jirachi's just like, uh, it's either, I don't know, it, the Jirachi hasn't gone for rocks yet, so the rocks definitely could be on the Mammoth Swine. If they're not on the Mammoth, if they are on Rachi, I don't know, like, it'd be like Iron Head, U-turn, rocks, and uh, the last move could be like a bunch of shit. But um, the fact that he hasn't gone for rocks yet means it's probably rocks on Mammo and like Wish Protect on Rachi. Um, on Sabella's side, we'll look at the sets quickly because we didn't go into them too much. Like, the way it's been, like, the way Sabella keeps playing the Magnezone, like, I do think it's Scarf. And I would also say it's probably Scarf uh, Kartana because, like, Scarf Mag isn't enough speed control. But, like, Scarf Mag um, is able to get rid of a lot of the things that annoy, like, Scarf uh, Kartana. And then it's probably a Mega Latios because also, like, the things that Mega Latios, uh, you know, is... Uh, the things that Megalodios doesn't like would be mostly just Scizor and um, Scizor and Ferrothorn, and obviously Zone Traps both of those. So that seems like that would have a lot of good synergy there. Uh, talking about like if the the Latios is EQ Draco Psychic, um, I also which which opens up Z Move Gren possibly. Like I would I. I don't know, it could be anything, right? But, like, most Grens nowadays are, unless they're, like, Hazard Lead, are Battle Bond. Uh, so it could be Specs Gren, but then I don't see a Z-Move. So, 
Uh, it could also just be like some sort of Z move, uh, Gren. So, but I guess we'll see that in, in time. Um, but yeah, I, the other Latios set that I've really been liking is Mega Latios with no Draco Meteor, and it's like Psychic EQ and HP Fire, which is a really good set too because it lures Scizor. Obviously, on this team you don't need it because you have Zone. But uh, yeah, that set's really cool too because you lure Pharaoh and Sis. Um, again, uh, Landorus go or uh, Psychic Mewtwo goes Landorus because on the Zone because like worst case he flash cannons and he still lives that. And and then he's still in a good posi uh, position next turn, uh, which is why I think he goes there because like he doesn't want to give up momentum um, on the Volt Switch. If he could go Landers and live it anyway, like it, it is a risky play, but it's worked out for him both times. He's gone to Lando on the zone, and then he H makes a really nice play to HP icing on the Lando. Um, obviously, Mewtwo Psychic Mewtwo could have just U turn there, which would have been another good play. But Hidden Power was uh, even better. He's in Sabella's head right now, so uh, we see a Draco on the Jirachi. Uh, I actually don't mind that play from Sabella. I, on Psychic Mewtwo's side, I wouldn't have gone Jirachi. I probably would have pivoted into Tangrowth first in case he wanted to go for Earthquake. But uh, yeah, he's making all like the perfect reads here. Oh my god. Uh, I also didn't think that Earthquake there on the um, on the Jirachi was a particularly good play because at minus two, the Lando was pretty free anyway. Uh, but now uh, we see the Latios does roost on the U-turn, so uh, back to a good amount of health here. And actually, this Tangrowth can't do anything to this Latios. Like, Knockoff's not going to do anything anyway. Um, but I still think you could probably just knock. Like, I don't know. Or like, okay, he goes Coco on what? On roost. Yeah, that makes sense. And now he's probably just going to U-turn again. Like, if I'm psyching me U-turn, I'm probably just U-turning again. Because, well, we don't know. Like, I don't think he has Dazzling Gleam, because a lot of times the, you mostly see Dazzling Gleam on spec sets. Uh, usually with U-Turn, you'll see, like, U-Turn, T-Bolt, HP Ice, like, Roost or Taunt or something like that. So, we do see the U-Turn, and that actually does a bunch of damage. So, I'm pretty sure that's Physical Coco. And like I said before, because I, I think I mentioned before, right, the Coco is probably the Z-Move. Oh, my God. <laughs> Every turn, Psychic Mewtwo... So he's playing really well right now. Um, he's making a lot of risky plays, but they're all working out for him. But yeah, like I said, because I don't see another Z-Mover on Psychic Mewtwo's side, I'm pretty sure it's Z-Coco, like Physical Wild Charge. Um, we see the U-Turn, Chansey Sack, and I guess Psychic Mewtwo could go into anything right here. Like You're obviously going to sack the Chansey. What's it doing at 9%? Um, so he goes Rachi, right? And he's just going to U-Turn. Uh, I don't think you need to Iron Head. I don't... like. I think... U turns just better. Yep, kill the Chansey. And now you could probably go. Let me think. I guess if you're Psychic Mewtwo, you could go into, like, the Coco. Uh, yeah, he goes Coco. And that will probably bait out what I would assume to be Scarf Cartana. Um, yeah, so it's Scarf Cartana. So if I'm Psychic Mewtwo here, I'd just go into uh, Tangrowth to scout what it locks into. Um, I guess. Yeah, I guess the one thing that, like, you probably, you, like, you wouldn't want the, the Tangrowth to get knocked. Because if the Tangrowth gets knocked, you could be in more of a problem against Gren. But you have so many sacks left that if it's, like, Specs Gren, I don't think you have to worry about that at all. Um, if it is, like, a Z-move Gren, though, that actually could be really scary because uh, the Lando's obviously already in range for from Water Shuriken. Uh, the Coco would die to Hydro. Uh, but as long as I think you keep the Gyarados healthy, you should be fine because Mega Gyarados is going to slurp up. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know about that play from Psychic Mewtwo. <laughs> um, I would have definitely went Tangro just to scout the Kartana. Like I said, if you lost your AV, I still didn't think it was like end of the world. Um, but yeah, now, uh, like I'm saying, like with the Ash Gun, like yeah, you have your main check in Tangro, but like um, Mega Gera is also like amazing Ash Gun check. If you have... Like, even, I'm pretty sure it still beats it 1v1. Like, even though, like, Waterfall's not doing that much damage, like, I'm pretty sure it still does, like, I, after Rocks, I probably would still, like, 2 a or come close to it. Um, and you don't get 2 a KO'd by, like, Dark Pulse or Hydro. They don't do shit damage. I think, like, Hydro does, like, 30, even from Specs Ashgren, like, 35-ish. Um... Yeah, and the Tangrowth here is just going to go... Like, if I was Psychic Mewtwo here, I'd probably just knock off, because if you... Because um, it doesn't let the Latios come back in, right? Because um, the Lottie's low, because it took the U-turn from Coco. So if it tries to switch in on, like, a Hidden Power or something, you could knock it out with knockoff. And also, if the Kartana stays in for whatever reason here, which, I mean, it shouldn't, but if it does, then it gets outsped by Lander, by Scarf Lando, which is also uh, pretty key here. 
And knock off, I guess knocking off uh, Magnezone would be nice too because it opens up um, Mamoswine even more because it would lose its uh, its choice scarf and then obviously Mamo would outspeed. Uh, but we see it's HP Fire. Uh, I, I like that play a lot too uh, from Psychic Mewtwo. I obviously thought this would be like HP Ice, but if it's HP Fire, that was fine to go for there. Um, I, like I said before, the, you don't see Tangrowth that much just because like Bulu is better in most every way. Um, it just has more offensive presence, uh, it supports the rest of your team better, and uh, just in general, great. AV Bulu is my favorite Mon at the moment, I, I throw that on so many teams. But yeah, obviously there's no reason for Psychic Mewtwo to, to switch out. What is Scarf Magnezone doing to AV Tangrowth? It can't do any damage to it, uh, so it just kills with HP Fire. Now obviously Sabella here is going to roost, uh, so if, if uh, Psychic Mewtwo predicts that, he could go into the Landers and then click U-Turn, but that doesn't get him much because if he goes Scarf Lando, then Lottie's just going to uh, recover again anyway, most likely. The other option that Psychic Mewtwo has is to like pivot into Jirachi and then like try and pivot out on Earthquake, but that I don't like that set of plays either. Because um, I'm pretty sure Jirachi is like relatively low, because I think it, it like took the Draco, I think it's at like 50 maybe. So if I was Psychic Mewtwo, I'd still go here into uh, Landers, because like I said, I don't think, yeah, he goes Lando because he's definitely roosting here. Uh, that's Sabella's only play. And now, uh, Sabella could. Sabella could uh, roost again on the U-turn, or he can go Tangra or uh, Kartana on the U-turn. The problem is if he goes Kartana on the U-turn, um, then he just gets. Then he's just gonna go into. Um, I guess he just goes Growth again, but then you could go back Latios. Yeah, he stays in on the U-turn, which is what I was thinking he'd probably do. And I'm assuming he roosts here, right? So he does go Rachi. Uh, good play. That yeah. So this set of plays worked out perfectly for Psychic Mewtwo because now. Um, the Jirachi will be able to eat this uh, Earthquake easy from Lottie now that it's intimidated. If I had to guess, like, head calc, it would do, like, I don't know, 35 to 40-ish now with an Intimidate. Because it'll probably do somewhere close to 60 without the Intimidate. Um, yeah. Yeah, 35. Look at that. I'm, like, am I Jesus at that? <laughs> Got all the calcs on deck. Uh, he's going to go back into Lando here, yeah, and just U-turn. So, he played around this Latios really well, even though he didn't have, like, the best answers to it. Uh, Psychic Mewtwo is able to, you know, play around it well with shuffling the Intimidates on it and obviously putting it in range of the Lando U-Turn eventually. U-Turn on the Kartana. That was Sabella's only play, though, was to go Kartana because obviously U-Turn would have killed the other Mons. Actually, it might not have killed Gren from full, but it would have pretty much killed it. Uh, and I think the only way that Sabella could win at this point is, like, if the, if the Gren is, like, non-Z-Move, or, I'm sorry, if it is Z-move, like, non-choiced, and you could, like, flinch down the Tangrowth and the and the uh, Gyarados. That's the only way. It, hopefully he knock. Did he knock? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, I like that play a lot by Psychic Mewtwo, because, like I was saying before, if he stays in with the Kartana and gets knocked off, then the Landers will outspeed and kill it with Earthquake. Um, and then if he switches out, like, if he's expecting the HP Fire and tries to go into Latios to heal up, he will die, too. So, I felt like Nock was a perfect play there for Psychic Mewtwo. Because, like I said, the two options... Like, I guess if Sabella wanted to, he could have gone Gren, but then what's Gren doing back? You know what I mean? Like, so he was either going to stay in um, or go try and heal up his Lottie. So, that's why I felt like Knockoff covered both those plays really well. And now, Sabella is, like, lost. He says GG. Yeah, there's no way to win. Uh, unless he's like, like I said already, if he Z move Gren and he could flinch the Tangrowth and the and the um, the Gyarados down, maybe um, we see HP Fire kill. Uh, and now Sabella will go into the Gren and we'll see if we can make magic happen. I'm a, we'll see what kind of Gren it is. Um, probably from this damage on Growth, I'm pretty sure like normal Dark or Specs Dark Pulse does like 35, like you know, like 32 ish, somewhere in that range. So, if it's, yeah, 24, so it was some sort of Z move. So, if Gren, yeah, so that's game. Psychic Mewtwo played incredible, or, like, at least he, he, uh, he just, like, stunned at almost every turn. Like, I, <laughs> there were a couple plays that I thought were, like, a little risky, but, I mean, for him, they all worked out well, and he played really well, and he had control the whole, the whole battle, so, uh, congrats to Psychic Mewtwo. Uh, I'm trying to think now, if, if the Gren got the flinch on that Tangrowth, could it have won? Um, if you flinch the Tangrowth with one Dark Pulse, you try and kill it with Z, Psychic Mewtwo probably shouldn't stay in there, but even let's say he did, um, the Tangrowth dies, and if it's not choice, you kill the, you kill the Jirachi, you kill the Lando, you kill the Mamoswine, so it would have came down to, like, flinches on Gera, but I think he would have need multiple flinches, 
Um, but yeah, I guess um, definitely that's yeah. It worked out well though for it worked out well. Like no, it, it was like relatively hacks free game. So just good good job by Psychic Mewtwo. He played really well. So here we see that the the tyrant Psychic Mewtwo's on the tyrants. Uh, so there you'll be up 1-0 right now on the classiest uh, after that win by Psychic Mewtwo. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the game, make sure to give Docker Rich some likes, some comments, and subscribe. And until next time, Ultra Balls out. Peace.